Hi there YouTube, this is a sort of part two to how uh, narcissists and toxic people behave on sort of chat rooms and particular dating sites and online if they're kind of looking to meet somebody online and they've met you, you lucky, unlucky, so and so. Um, so part one was much more the kind of quite obvious red flags really of things to look for, how they behave in terms of little things like not wanting to speak in the evening or weekends often means that they're not single and things like that. So that's the previous video to this one. And this is sort of part two. So you've got talking to them now, right? You're, you're actually now having conversations with this person and you've maybe been silly enough, like many of us are, to ignore the other red flags that were in the other video. And my advice to you would be to listen to what the narcissist does not say. So listen to how they avoid topics about emotional uh, relationships they've had, intimate relationships they've had, children, why don't they see their children, do they see their children, what's their relationship like with their family? So you're looking for all those just little telltale signs that there's something dysfunctional about how this person lives their life. Obviously there's green flags you want to be looking for, but I don't, I don't necessarily prescribe to agreeing with those, all of those, because sometimes you get people that are introverts and extroverts and they're perfectly normal human beings who have never done anything wrong in their life. And I saw somebody uh, did a, a post on, I think it was Instagram, saying a green flag would be the, the individual, aka poss the possible narcissist here, having long-standing friendships. And um, if they're a natural introvert, uh, they're not, it's less likely they're going to have long-standing friendships. So to look for the kind of green flags is, is, is slightly more difficult than looking for the red ones. But like I say, listen, listen to the narcissist, what they don't say. You know, you're probably quite willing to talk about what is functional and dysfunctional within their life. A narcissist will not talk about what's dysfunctional. Um, they will not um, openly admit to being at the root of a relationship breakup. You're not going to get a narcissist saying to you, um, actually, I'm looking to meet somebody now. I broke up with my uh, my wife or my husband because I actually cheated. Um, you're not going to get that level of authenticity and honesty from these types. Um, whereas you, me, anybody else may possibly say, actually, I kind of made a bit of a cock up of my previous relationship. I had addictions or I had a problem with porn or I had a problem with infidelity or I just was really rubbish. I wasn't ready for the relationship. Narcissists will not speak that way. Dysfunctional people, people with dark tetrad personality disorders will be more than happy, ready to slate everybody else and say the things that they think you're going to want to hear, which is the pity party, which is, oh, it was all terrible, this was all these awful things happened to me and all that. So they overshare on the stuff they know they're going to get human supply in reaction to, and they undershare and probably don't even talk about at all the stuff that their little inner wounded child feels that you'll run away from. And this will be anything self-deprecating, anything honest, anything about their mistakes. They're not going to talk like that. Um, so you need to be really wary of that kind of stuff. Um, what else? So, yeah. And so you probing them and saying, do you mind me asking? You know, because maybe you've been around the houses a few times. You've been through the dating cycle a few times. and You've met a few rotten apples, right? And you think this is the one. I like this guy or this girl. They're hypersexual. I'm kind of like that. Um, and they, they, they're they chatty and they're conversationalists, they want to meet me, they seem into this, they're looking for love, this is all the stuff that the narcissist has said, and you're thinking, okay, 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 you're nodding your head like the wee dog in that advert, right? Um, but what you're not going to get is anything that's too honest and too self-deprecating, and you're just going to get stuff where they, they know, they have cognitive empathy, they know what to say to get you to react. So if you've put in your profile, that you're um, caring and nurturing and loving and you're looking to uh, look after a real man or uh, make someone feel like a princess, which in narcissist world could be both, to be fair. They do behave like princesses, but they also still want to be real men. Um, as I would say to, uh, the dogs put me off then, I would say to be very conscious of what they don't say in terms of that. The dogs put me off, that's it, it's thrown me. Um, so yeah, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for authenticity, you're looking for openness, you're looking for them to converse about their mistakes as well as their pluses. You're not looking for the pity party, that's what it was before they started running around. You're not looking for the pity party. You don't want them to be like, oh, and this happened, that happened, that, that oversharing stuff, because that's a bit too much, isn't it? Like, that's, you might not even have met them yet, okay? So that's the sort of, <laughs> never do, never do a YouTube video when there's dogs around. There's the top tip.
Anyway, I hope that that's given you a little bit of insight anyway.